Welcome to Private Banking Strategies Podcast with Vance Lowe and Seth Hicks, your secret weapon to protect your assets and never have to start over financially again. Vance and Seth help high net worth individuals, families, business owners, and investors structure an asset-protected, tax-free fortress for their families. Learn how to keep what you earn and use the velocity of money to create your own private banking system. Join us on this journey as we explore the secret strategies of the rich and political elite and help you take total control of your financial security. Now, on to the show. Hello and welcome to Private Banking Strategies with Vance Lowe and Seth Hicks. Today we're actually, this is a part two. If you have not heard part one, you definitely need to go back and do that because the gentlemen are doing something a little bit different with these podcasts. Vance is going to start off by telling a story, a story of a real client. Now, the first the, the last podcast was the first part of this couple story, the heartache that they felt when they first came into the office because they were under a massive amount of debt, which I know Vance will recap here in a moment. Massive amount of debt, didn't see a way out, heartbroken, devastated by their circumstances. And then the process in which Vance and Seth started to work with them, Vance tells that story. And then Seth breaks down kind of how it works, the the meat of the issue, some of the strategies they they use. So this is this podcast will be a, a two part podcast within this podcast. So stay around for the entire thing. But if you haven't heard the first part, go hear the foundation of what we're talking about today. Vance and Seth, so good to be with you again. Thanks, Eric. It's wonderful to be here today. Absolutely. And Vance, I know that we're going to continue the story of Mr. Cairo, right? Was it, what, is that what we're calling him? Right. All right. All right. Can you give just a, a brief recap of what we started with on the last podcast and then dive into the next part of this story? Oh, yeah, absolutely. So here we have a typical family with two children. They were misdiagnosed with what's called Lyme's disease. He's a chiropractor and he couldn't practice for two full years before they found out their mistake. And he amassed a a critical amount of debt. And it was so high, it was over a half a million dollars of extra debt, that when he went back to work, they're, they're practical individuals, and they think they understand a little bit about money, but they could not ever see themselves getting above this debt. And so uh, there was a last-ditch effort out there to see if there's something that could be done for them so they didn't have to take out bankruptcy. Mm-hmm. So the full story here is in a video that uh, we'll, we'll show you how to acquire so you can actually follow along and see what the, these clients did step by step, what they did month by month to overcome this issue. The comment was, I'm never getting out of debt. There's no way even, even throwing a little extra money that, that we have will get out of debt at a compound average rate of return of over 16%. We can't see our, our, our boys uh, staying at uh, college. We can't hold our heads up if we have to do taxes. And so the anguish and the turmoil these folks were in was a heartthrob for all of us. But they listened and they trusted and they did exactly what they were told to do. And we're going to go into that in a little bit of depth now. They had acquired, there's 13, 14 different debts. They owed everybody, their friends, Mm. (laughs) their banks, everything. So we prioritized that debt. Then we asked them, what additional assets can you come up with? And again, the tears came. Listen, we've been through everything. Well, maybe we could sell this. Maybe we could do that. Maybe we could do this. And we told them, do it and show us what you can come up with. Hmm. And they quickly realized that, okay, hey, we we really could come up with about $33,000 and I could afford two office patient visits. The profit I make on each two clients per day, that's mm-hmm. about $20,000 a year. But we're talking about almost $500,000 of debt, wow. 16% interest, and we're going to throw out at $20,000 a year and maybe $30,000 of additional assets. Come on, folks, that doesn't work. In fact, it does work, and it works absolutely Beautiful. So I want to introduce a concept right now that we immediately installed in this couple. First of all, we had to teach them. We need you to stop thinking about how you're going to solve your money issues Mm -hmm. because Americans are programmed 
according to what banks want us to know. It's very diabolical. There's a system out there where we could all be financially independent, but that was stripped out of our education system in favor of the banks taking control of all of that. Mm -hmm. The banks actually see us as cattle out in the fields going to work to feed them. We'll all agree that banks always get the money back. And the reason they get the money back is they lend it. We missed the day that they gave free money out. Well, banks don't give out free money. They never have. They never will. As a matter of fact, a branch doesn't get to enjoy any fruits of what their office does. Everything in their office is financed back to the home office. They mm -hmm. have to make a payment on it. Yeah. They account for every expenditure. They always get the money back. So the second concept is don't trust in yourself. It's not so much what we don't know about money. It's all about what we think we know about money that's incorrect. And we're going to say that over and over again because we all have in our minds the scenario, if this were to happen to us, how we would solve it. Folks, after almost 40 years in the financial arena, I've come to discover that almost 90% of the time, Above 85% of the time, it's wrong. What you think is going to be correct will be wrong. And most of the time, it's 180 degrees wrong. But it's exactly what the banks want you to do. You see, we're living a get-back-to-zero strategy. Now, if we have gurus, we've been taught that we should save up and pay cash for everything. Well, if we do that, typical car, anything like that, and we pay for the car, where does that leave us? Back to zero. Mm -hmm. If we go into debt, now we're below zero. We're going to make payments. And right when we almost get ready to pay off that car, that car's wore out, we go <laughs> finance another car, right? Where does that leave us? All roads lead us to zero. Yeah, that's right. We spend our monthly expenses. We have to go back and replace that. We are a slave to the system here in the United States, and we don't even know it. So rule number one, we talked about this in the last po podcast, never spend principal, and you can start that today. We need to recognize what our assets are. They said in this illustration that they could accumulate and put to work $33,000. We're going to, we'll just round it at thirty-three. So I need to discuss what is asleep and what is awake, because we're taught by banks, pay cash for everything or finance everything, and all of your extra money, go put it in an account and try to collect compound interest. Eric, would you agree with that? Uh, yeah, absolutely. I've heard that forever. Uh, ab absolutely. It could be a mutual fund. It could be crypto. It could be anything that we feel like we could get a return on. Mm -hmm. But in fact... We have to keep that money in that account, and for us, it's asleep. And the only hope we have is to try to collect a little bit of interest while the people take our money and put it to work. Yeah. And they'll double it. They'll three times it over the same time frame. They'll make all kinds of income on that money because it's actively at work. In our universe, the law is all about motion. If this earth stops spinning, we don't exist. Mm -hmm. If air and water doesn't flow through us, we die. If fruit sits, it rots. If water sits, it stagnates. If cars aren't sold at the dealership, the dealership loses money. If groceries aren't sold at the grocery store, they lose money. Mm -hmm. Motion is critical. But yet our banks, and we're taught to go put money in accounts and put them to sleep for us. We deserve what we get. We're never going to get ahead. Maybe one person does here or one person does there for a little while, but the banks will always end up with all that money. So we're going to wake up this money. Where's the best place to invest money where you don't have any risk whatsoever? No market risk, no economy risk, nothing. The very place you can put it is to buy and to finance your own debt. The person in the mirror is the only risk you have. So evaluate that. If the guy looking back at you in the mirror is a shady character, <laughs> guys, we all have problems. <laughs> but I'll bet you 
You trust that guy. But we're going to make and carve that guy out as a separate individual. And we've never been taught this, that in our own personal life, our personal family's life, we have to run our financial affairs just like an economy where money flows. So to get money back, we have to do it the way the banks do it. We have to lend the money. Who's the best place, person to lend money to? The guy in the mirror. He's getting a free load right now. He gets to, he gets to just free load off of what we're having to pay for. Not any longer. He goes to work to earn a new income, and he spends it. Well, he spends it on all of his bills. So if we, outside the mayor, buy one of those bills, when he makes that payment, where's that money going to end up? Hmm. See, that's the game, is the end game. Where's the money going to end up? If we own the bill and he makes the payment, or if we have someone else that borrows money, we're going to expect them to make the payment. It'll end up back in our hoppers. And how much return would you like on that money? Do you want to beat taxes and inflation? Well, we can easily beat taxes because there are no taxes in this game. Mm -hmm. This is a private world that is not public. There is no tax. It's all advantaged for us. In addition, we want to beat inflation. So we can charge ourselves. If we want to make a return of 10, 15, 20, 24 percent, we actually have clients making over 100 percent annual return on some of their loans. We'll actually introduce that here as we discuss line item loans. But what I'm trying to get at and where I'm going with this, just with this one concept alone, it changed their lives. Okay, Mm -hmm. I need to wake up my money. I'm going to first go buy a little bit of debt. So how much will that $33,000 buy me? Well, in the plan, we can go through the numbers and show you exactly which debts it bought. Notice that I didn't say pay off. That's Mm -hmm. because you don't want the guy in the mirror to catch wind. Yeah, he's agreed to make those payments. All he's going to find out is, oh, somebody else bought those loans. (laughs) Okay. It just so happens to be you, the owner. And that money starts flowing back to you. And now we get to use it over again. And so the volume of return is where money is made. So that's the next concept. The volume that we get back in those payments is additional power, which means additional capital that we can put to work to go buy more debt without having to come up with new money. Hmm. And that is called exponential compounding. So to see the effect of how this worked with this client, they never had to work harder. They never changed the way they spend money. All they changed was who ended up with it, and they put a little bit of their money to work. So $33,000 up front, and then they added to their banking system $20,000 a year. When they ask about that, they ask, well, how much should we be putting in our banking system? I was literally shocked when my mentor, Nelson Nash, answered that question the very first time to some of my clients. He said, I'll answer that question. How much do you make annually? How much do you take home annually? Well, when this guy asked that question, there were 72 other people in the room. You don't Mm -hmm. want to divulge your (laughs) your income. But he said, no, I'm trying to figure out how much premium or how much I want to put in this policy. And he said, I'm trying to tell you, folks. You're, you're putting 100% of your annual income in someone else's bank right now, aren't you? Hmm. Your goal is to put 100% in your bank. But start where you're comfortable and get there as fast as you can. So that's my take on this right now. And there's a lot of concepts and a lot of principles that we need to dissect. So right now we're going to just take a quick break and we'll come right back with Seth jumping in and, and really kind of breaking it down. Do you see yourself in that story? Do you feel like you are generating a lot of revenue but are not moving forward as fast as you would like? Are you ready for help? Please call Private Banking Strategies at 817-200-4777 or visit us at www.privatebankingstrategies.com. Are you ready to talk? Click on the link in the show notes and schedule an exploratory call today. 
All right, welcome back. Thank you so much for still being here. I'm glad you're listening. You will be too. Seth is about to break down some of these concepts and get into it a little bit more. I know there's going to be some good discussion here. So Seth, take it away. Thanks, Eric. So there are seven pillars of private banking strategies. And Vance is describing an example for a family that that became rock stars Mm -hmm. in our uh, repertoire of clients. One of the the pillars that Vance is accentuating is called the velocity of money, multiple touches on the same dollar. And I don't know how many times people say, well, you can't use the same dollar twice. And we, we kind of chuckle and laugh. And you, you absolutely can. You've heard Vance say in, in this series, the banks always get the money back, meaning they're lending money. And whether you pay the grocery store or a contractor or your utilities, it's going back to a centralized bank. And it's all going back through a centralized system. We want to teach you how to get the money back in your own private banking strategy. That's the velocity of money and how you create multiple touches on the same dollar. That's how you get tailwind lift. Mm -hmm. And that's how you begin to accelerate into financial freedom. Let me let me break it down like this. So you capitalize your own private bank with a dollar. You use that same dollar theoretically, not literally, but theoretically to go and purchase debt, your debt or to make an investment. But we're working on purchasing debt right now because of the chiropractic family. So they went and they capitalized their own bank with a dollar. They took that same dollar out of their bank and they went and purchased their own debt. They were earning money and they continued to capitalize their bank and they continued to go and purchase their their own debt. Now, from the outside world, they would say, well, you're just paying off your debt. Well, no, that's, that's an ignorant paradigm. And you're actually purchasing that debt through your family bank where you create an arm's length contract where you're obligated to pay the entity, your family bank, back with the rate of interest on a specific term albeit your terms, because you're the Mm -hmm. banker and the borrower. So you're never going to be deprived financing. You're never going to be foreclosed upon. Your car is never going to be repossessed because you can renegotiate the terms with your banker. You go in the mirror, you make a good deal, shake hands, (laughs) and start a new term. It's called the loan modification. Anybody who went through the real estate cycle in 2007, 2008 should understand modifications. Mm -hmm. So loans can definitely be modified. And when you're the banker and the borrower, you can modify the loans and that is perfectly acceptable. You set the interest rate, you set the terms and you, you sit back. And the only person that you have to uh, keep accountable is the person in the mirror. Like Vance said, if you're a shady guy and you don't pay your debts, then you're going to have problems with this system. But if you can use the discipline and the strategies that we're providing, you'll find your your way to financial freedom out of debt in quicker time than you realize. Mm. So this chiropractor used the, this dollar to capitalize his bank in the form of premiums. He then used that money to purchase his own debt, his pre-existing debt, whether it was home mortgages, HELOCs, private loans, car loans, credit car loans, personal loans, or otherwise, and began to hammer those out. And every debt that he purchased and every dollar that he cycled through a premium into the life insurance policy and out through a policy loan to purchase that debt and then got a form of repayment back to his bank, that that is what we're talking about with always getting the money back. The, mm-hmm. ba- the Getting the money back, the, the mo- that dollar ended up back in his account multiplied. Multiplied with interest, multiplied with tax-free growth, multiplied through the entire process. And that's just a very simple example of multiple touches on the same dollar. There's some folks out there getting many, many touches on the same dollar, and it's really only limited by your ability to creatively structure and strategize transactions. Now, we get this question a lot, and I'll let Vance chime in for a moment, and you probably... Uh, have thought this too. Well, which which loans did he focus on first, and why, mm. Vance? Well, the easiest answer to that question is what you can purchase at that time. The payments won't transfer from headwind 
to Tailwind until you can actually take over the loan and stop the payments going to someone else. The whole purpose here, I just want to mention, and then Seth continue, is the fact of the incentivized ability to make those payments in such a way that it creates that tailwind. That Mm -hmm. tailwind's really going to help make those multiple touches. So I hope that answers the question. And I'll add a little bit to it with for a little sauce and a cherry on top. It, sometimes it depends on the personal situation. In in this chiropractic example, he had a personal loan to uh, a, a friend. And we've had other clients that have had personal loans to friends. They may not be the highest interest rate loans that they've got, but for personal reasons, they want to knock those out for the mm-hmm. perception that we talked about mm-hmm. in, in the first part of the podcast, fear of failure in front of their friends, fear of failing financially in front of their friends and family. So you might want to knock that one out first. But my, my personal uh, opinion is to take the highest interest ones out first or ones that have the most strategic purpose from a tax planning perspective. Mm -hmm. But we get that question a lot. So that's a small sidebar. Another pillar that that is exemplified in this example is the guaranteed financing in the the private banking strategies. He's never going to be turned down from financing ever again, because he's going to finance things through his own bank. And he had at the end of this 73 uh, month, a success story. These folks had hundreds of thousands of dollars in their bank, providing them with the liquidity to go and invest in other real estate, to finance other chiropractic office acquisitions. And they even got into lending to other chiropractors to acquire their businesses. So they began to see that it was more profitable to be a bank than to simply use their own bank. And we've seen that happen over and over again, where people go out and begin to lend to friends and family and third parties and continue to that that system out there with other people. Now, there's another pillar that I want to accentuate, and I'll bring Vance in for some of his comments. It's the second pillar of private banking strategies, tax-free growth. Now, we're telling you, once you've got this money in your whole life insurance contract and you take the money out and you put it to work and then you pay those loans back, those are all non-taxable events. They're carved out in the Internal Revenue Code on purpose because the same banksters, politicians, and wealthy folks running our country use these same systems. The biggest clients of insurance companies are centralized banks. Wells Fargo, Bank of America, they have literally billions in life insurance on their employees because they understand these principles and especially Mm -hmm. tax-free growth. This is where you get that tailwind. This is where it pays to move money out of a retirement account, pay the penalties now, and get them into a system where you're not paying any taxes ever. Whether you take it out now, later, or never, there's no tax implications whatsoever. So in contrast to a 401k where the government's going to get their taxes, Mm -hmm, they're mm -hmm. going to get their taxes now if you pull it out early, they're going to get their taxes later if you pull it out then, there's always going to be a tax event. But that is not so with private banking strategies and these policies that we structure. There's no taxable event. Vance? Absolutely. That was a beautiful explanation right there. I I can hardly expound on that. But picture the perfect investment, folks. See if you're in this boat. How would you like your investments to earn a high rate of interest, non-taxable? But better yet, wouldn't that be a better investment if you could use that money and purchase debt or put it to work somewhere else and still get the original interest and now add to it the interest that you're going to charge for, for, for lending money on the loan, that would be two separate interests, wouldn't it? Hmm. Okay. And again, this is all part of that exponential compounding, and it's all tax advantaged. Wow. That's powerful. Uh, absolutely powerful. All right, guys, any other closing thoughts for today's podcast? We're running low on time. This it goes by so fast. I mean, this is, this is crazy. Anything that we need to close with today? 
Eric, we're talking about a lot of different different things here with these pillars, but one one thing that we're we're going to lay seed for that I wanted to lay seed for, and then I'll I'll hand the mic to Vance, is we haven't even scratched the surface on asset protection and financial privacy that this mm-hmm. provides. And when you faced bankruptcy and you faced complete financial devastation, once you begin to crawl out of that hole and amass assets again, the last thing you want to do is ever stare that loss in the face again. Yeah. And so that's why the first pillar of private banking strategies is asset protection. Man, yeah, that's Vance. fantastic. Yeah, I really don't have that much more to say other than the time goes by so fast. There's so much to detail out here. We could, we literally could spend a half a year in these <laughs> podcasts just going over this family, and every one of our listeners would go away much more educated and yeah. understanding how money works. Well, and the beauty of it is, is that for those listening, this will not be a six month podcast. I promise that we're going to wrap it up here. But the beauty is that there is more information. There are more resources that these guys have, and they're willing to give it away for free. There's a Loom video that we talked about a little bit earlier in the show. And that is something that we will be putting into the show notes. So it's about a 30 minute video, if I'm not mistaken, that really breaks things down, gives you the numbers, walks you through. It's a visual so you can see that. And that will be in the show notes. So you can go ahead and click on that. It'll take you right there. And that is given to you by these guys for free. Take advantage of that. Seth and Vance, again, thank you so much for your time today. Great information. I know that we're going to we're gonna do a part three just on this family as well. So we're going we're gonna to come back and break down more of the strategies. Thanks, Eric. Sounds great, Eric. I really appreciate it. And of course, our last thank you goes to you, the listening audience. We wouldn't be here without you. Thank you so much for tuning in and listening to the Private Banking Strategies podcast with Vance Lowe and Seth Hicks. If you have not subscribed to the podcast yet, please click the subscribe now button below. This way, when Vance and Seth come out with a new podcast, it'll show up directly on your listening device. This makes it much easier to share these podcasts with your friends and family. Again, thanks for listening today. For everyone at Private Banking Strategies, this is Eric Johnson reminding you to live your best day every day. And we'll see you next time. Did that story feel like it was about you? Do you feel you should be making more progress toward your financial goals? Do you feel stuck? Let us help you get unstuck. Are you ready to take action and get your own private bank? Please call Private Banking Strategies at 817-200-4777 or visit us at www.privatebankingstrategies.com. Are you ready to talk today? Click on the link in the show notes to schedule an exploratory call. Thank you for listening to the Private Banking Strategies Podcast. Click the subscribe button below to be notified when new episodes become available. The information covered and posted represents the views and opinions of the guest and does not necessarily represent the views or opinions of private banking strategies. The content has been made available for informational and educational purposes only. The content is not intended to be a substitute for professional investing advice. Always seek the advice of your financial advisor or other qualified financial service provider with any questions you may have regarding your investment planning.